Matchbox 20. Great thing about uh, being here in the Direct Auto Insurance Garage is that we get to have this give and take kind of thing going on here. And this is the part of the uh, show where uh, you've always wanted to ask them something. Now is Oh, I thought this chance. is where we give them music and they give us their money. <laughs> the whole give and take thing, they explained this to us wrong. After. The, the thing is, we, we let them in for free. We charge them to leave. <laughs> to leave, yeah. <laughs> we do the same thing at our shows. You're, you're going to stay? Okay, all right. All right. I, I mean, do the same thing with like friends at my house. It's kind of, it's kind of the same deal. <laughs> Just don't make any long distance calls while you're here, okay? All right, who wants to, who, who's got a, a burning question? Right here. Hey guys, uh, is Paul still ridiculously crazy when doing tours about like lighting sets and just yes. going fanatical? <laughs> yes. <Nice>. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, no, he swears that this time he swore he wasn't going to be that guy, and he was still that guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I'm His, done being that guy. He actually said, Yeah. Email, said, I'm done. Yeah. Being I'm, that I'm guy. guys like Rob. Now you take care of this as your thing, and then I'll be okay. I made this decision. He's like, I don't like that decision. Let me. Let me. <laughs> He's an obstructionist. Yeah. He ru he rules this band with an iron fist. A lot of people don't know that about Paul. <laughs> Leopard can't change his spots. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Who else got a question? Hand this back to her. Which is funny because Paul's actually three foot one. So it's really kind of funny. <laughs> okay, I'm really nervous. So I don't know if this is going to make any sense. but. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for when you say that. <laughs> um, what is the secret to writing music that uh, your fans that you made years and years ago um, had? that can grow with you and love your music now? Uh, um, luck. <laughs> oh, come is on. Is it hard? Um, I, you know, I don't know. Up? Here's the thing. Like, for, for, for most of us, it's the, it's, the, it's, what we, it's the only thing we do. You know what I mean? So in the sense of, like, is it hard? Well, it doesn't feel hard, but, like, if you put me, you know, under the hood of a car, I would be an alien. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know anything about sports. I don't know anything about sure. cars. I don't know about, you know, electronics. But I know about this. So it's not hard because it's the one thing that we kind of yeah. spend... We've done our 10,000 hours, you know, just doing it. This well, is all we do. Well, as one of those fans, keep making Matchbox 20 music and not this crap that's done. on the radio. Done. <laughs> Thank you. But is it, is it okay if, if we become some of the crap that's on the radio? Cause that's... <laughs> Can you just kind of like wedge yourself between those two things of crap? <laughs> yeah, that, right? yeah exactly. on, the, on, the, on the radio. Yeah. yeah. And if you're another yeah, you're band, use if, that, I'm sure. If you're another band out there listening to this, we're not talking about you. Right. It's... <laughs> <laughs> somebody else somebody else yeah, completely. one of those other bands you guys you have put in your your 10 zillion hours as a band and and been relevant uh since you know we've ever heard of you in the beginning in the, in the 90s uh when you guys were starting out though you guys probably played some weird venues what was the weirdest thing do you ever have to play like a like a church picnic or like somebody's birthday party or, or you know those what, what was one of some of those strange places we get you guys these questions played questions a lot it's always like what's the what's the strangest thing that um well, somebody actually paid you to you are like really did we, did we did we really ever have a really strange thing? I, I don't i mean here's uh, i'm sure we did before full confession there's like a whole five year period at the beginning of our career that I don't remember very well. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. <laughs> so I am sure that it happened, but my, my there drunken were, there memory. There were a lot of concerts at people's houses after the concert. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, a lot yeah, of yeah, that, yeah. 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 I, you know, it's, it's funny because you, you got to imagine, and this, this goes out to our tour manager because it's really funny now, but like back in the day before everybody was married, before everybody kind of had, you know, kind of. A single-minded purpose and was taking care of themselves and and this was also before like cell phones and all that stuff we would be <laughs> before people could actually know, find yeah so we would like leave a, a, a venue somewhere at, like nine o'clock at night and then we would all wind up at somebody's house like miles and miles away in some neighborhood right and our, it was like the tour manager job just to find you yeah. you know <laughs> and it was literally like one of those almost famous things where the bus would have to pull up and figure out you know where right. somebody's you at wake up and some guy named jeff and his girlfriend are making you breakfast yeah. and you don't, know what, you don't know what's happening you know what i mean <laughs> oh Jeff. Hey. Where are we? Yeah. You get the address and Was then you know Shogun? somebody's running around with a map trying to figure out how to get there with the bus. Uh, I'd like to say they were the good old days, but again, I don't remember them. <laughs> so if somebody does remember them and they have pictures, they could like retell you what those early stories are. Yes, that yeah, would be great. True. Sometimes people do that. Yeah, you could scour the internet and maybe you know, locate I meet, more you meet, of our memories than we could. I meet right? some like really nice people who are like, I lived on your bus for a week. You don't remember me? I'm like, <laughs> We were soul brothers. <laughs> really sorry. Yeah. Who else has a question? Anybody? Way in the back. Uh, let me <clears throat> pass that back there. <laughs> Ron to me. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I heard that you don't like performing the song Mad Season. I wanted to know why. We're doing it now. 
<laughs> it's, it's funny. We actually just we just pulled it out in um in in our in our rehearsals that we're doing now. I and, think that uh, means he likes it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I like, like it again. again. He likes it again. Yeah. And are you happy about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, that's, you know, the, that's the important thing, really. We have um so for twelve years, Paul was our drummer, and then when we did the the greatest hits record, uh, Paul became our guitar player, and we we had a higher drummer. So this tour, we have a new drummer, a guy named Stacy Jones. Yes, he's amazing. He's an amazing drummer. He used to be the singer in American Hi-Fi. Oh, yeah. And he was flavor of the week. Yeah. yeah. And he was also the drummer for a band called Letters to Cleo for a while, and Veruca Salt. And Veruca Salt. Yeah, so he's a really great drummer, he but he, he loves yeah. Mad Season. And he's so he was like, Miley come on, Cyrus. can we play it, can we play it? So, yeah, Miley yeah, Cyrus Yeah, he was with Miley Cyrus for years, and we also have, um, we have her monitor guy. And who, uh, it's like pretty soon we're just like, you know, she's going to call us and say, stop hiring yeah. my people. <laughs> You're poaching. As, as long as we're playing, Miley Cyrus can't go on the road now. Yeah. We just have all of her people. <laughs> She I think, as soon as I, think I think Billy Ray's coming soon. Yeah, yeah, Billy, yeah, Billy, <laughs> Billy Ray's opening up. <laughs> Who else had questions out here? All right, right here. Is your tour going to stop here? And when is it? And can I have backstage passes? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to be coming through here until next year, but we'll be coming through for sure. Excellent. And you can talk to that bald guy about the passes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy. Diversion. <laughs> And he's driving a black Lexus, and it's parked in the back. <laughs> See, that's the, good, that's the good thing about being a rock star is you'd never have to be the bad guy. You always have other people be the bad guy for you. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, just I kinda... would have said yes in a heartbeat. But my, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really sorry, like... but look at that mean dude right there. He's saying no. <laughs> oh, we got to go? Oh, yeah. I'm about... definitely not a 40-year-old man who can make my own decisions. <laughs> <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> How do you make a five? <laughs> How about we do, we do one more question? Is what that cool? are you? <laughs> Question to the side. Wait, Hat Man. Hold on a second. Hat Man. Uh, the song Rest Stop is yeah. kind of a cruel and unusual song. Uh, is that based on some sort of true story? Yeah, yeah. I, um, when I was like, uh, I think I was probably like 18, 19, and I, was, I went to spring break, and I was literally like hitchhiked to Daytona and sleeping on park benches in Daytona over spring break. And I met this group of girls, it's very nice, like five girls that were all staying in this one room. And I, I used to travel with this little keyboard. And, they, and so they had this thing where they would let me stay in their room through the whole spring break. And they would buy me beer and buy me dinner. All I had to do was play, when we'd all get back to the room, I'd have to play music. So it was like my first gig. You were the piano man. Yeah, I was. I was. I was the piano band for room 226 or whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so me and this one girl kind of amused us. Dated. And uh, she, she lived in like, she lived somewhere else in Florida. And, we, we, were, like, we had this plan that I was going to come back with her and I was going to ride back to her and stay with her house for a while and try and make this relationship work. And halfway back to, to her hometown, she, uh, I was asleep and she, she pulled over the car and woke me up and was just like, uh, listen, this isn't going to work. And, and the funny, so, the, so she drops me off on the, on the side of the road and I'm there with my bags. And like, I wasn't heartbroken or anything. I was just kind of pissed because like I literally, as I'm standing like there, you couldn't do she, this when we got yeah, to she pulls it. off and there's a sign that says rest stop three miles. And I'm just like, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> really? really? Yeah, right. It's three miles. That's, That's what you can't, you know. <laughs> and so. I wonder if she's somewhere now that, and knows that, you know what I mean? Like. I've often thought that. Like, what yeah, would you right, say to she her? She knows yeah. that that song, you know what I mean? What would you say to her if, if she was like right here? She, th bitch, three miles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any reason to change your stance on that at all. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's been like, it's been 20 years. I'm still like, whoa. Time does, time does not heal some things. Yeah. But then with a song, like when you're writing a song, you, you over-romanticize that moment, quite frankly. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, when you hear it, you, you, you get this idea that like I was heartbroken and I was crushed. But I, it, you know, it was a nice time with a nice girl and she just did something not so nice at the end of our time together and that, that was it. <laughs> She's so mean. <laughs> 